Sarah Jaffe is here with her band. Hello, welcome. And I am, I am so excited to have you back because this new record, Don't Disconnect, is fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful record, and I know it's um still quite the departure of where we first met you. Sure. But but now we've had time. Now we've had albums in between to kind of get used to That's right. the new Sarah Jaffe. <laughs> <laughs> or the real Sarah Jaffe. Whichever one is best, yeah. yeah. I don't know what that would be. <laughs> I, I do want to hear about this, though, because Don't Disconnect, I guess, um, has a loose theme to it. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I, I just liked the fact that it could take on a, a technical, you know, the word disconnect is, is kind of a technical word, but I meant it more of an, in an emotive way. Yeah. So I just like that it could take on multiple, multiple meanings. So I thought that would be a great name for a record. Yeah, and I guess two of the big ways is uh, that I've read about at least is uh, one relationships, but uh, there's also that the the human interaction. I don't know. Is there is there a part about it that has something to do with technology? Most definitely. Um, you know, it was kind of written in a time period where I was just kind of drowning in in Facebook feeds and just distracting myself with with all of the all of the technology technology like anything that I could distract myself with. I was and. Um, you know, it was just a kind of a, a weird period of time that all of these songs were written. So I thought the title kind of encompassed uh, all of the songs pretty nicely. Yeah. So how do how do you have you beaten it? Have you been able to shut oh, down the God, Facebook? You feed? know, every day it's still a struggle. You know, <laughs> those Facebook feeds are um, because I don't know how. I, I tell myself all the time that. Don't, I've got a big sign on my computer that says don't look at Facebook <laughs> as I'm looking at Facebook, you know? I guess if we're going to be honest, I haven't beaten it. You haven't beaten it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a safe place here. It's only Thank me and you. you. You can talk about these things. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> now, that is a rough thing. I, I think there is something interesting, though, when you talk about in that way, in, sure. in the way of trying to disconnect from technology, and yet this album is a more electronic sounding. Sure. It is a more technology-rich album and it's not so big of a leap from the second album right i don't think so i i think the second album you know the body wins i felt like it was a little bit more of a jump than this one this one seemed to, like as a soft landing between the two yeah. um but i you know i i could see like you know from an aerial view how these all three of these records you know between the first and and don't disconnect would be vastly different but to me they all make sense right. and i guess that of course that's the case but um to me, it was it's just been a natural progression mm -hmm. to all different kinds of things because I listen to everything. Right. Everything. I think so. most people do. Yeah. It's just the critics who try to exactly to put you in the they want to put you in the in the. Oh, she wrote Clementine. Critics. How in the world will she do this? Right. Yeah, right. How could she be a human? <laughs> Onion skin, you are <laughs> the multi layers of Sarah Jaffe. Mm. Uh, on, <laughs> on the other side of it, um, and I guess that's that's the more humanistic and the relationship mm -hmm. side. Uh, is it the great challenge to try to write a love song that hasn't been written? Because I feel like you've done that on Do Disconnect. There, there are these relationships which I would categorize as a critic, mm -hmm. as a love song, but it's very different. Is that a challenge for you? Well, I mean, I'm a critic too. I'm especially a critic of my own stuff. So um, I think, you know, it w th with this record in particular, across the board, it was a bit more difficult to write because I'm happy so uh writing a love song what kind of came a little bit naturally you know songs like slow pour it was about you know the current relationship that i'm in and so things came a bit differently um it's really easy to write a song when you're unhappy right um so this was a little bit different for me what can we hear first um we're gonna play a song called defense
fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Again, the new yes. record is called uh, "Don't Disconnect." That's right. Um, and 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 I do want to talk about the history because I know you've had to kind of deal with that and 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 re, I don't know, invent yourself is the right word. But did it ever sure. feel like you were running from a sound with from the first record, "Suburban Nature," that was definitely more acoustic? It was folk, for lack of a better term. Sure. Um, maybe a little bit. You know, I think at the time I just remember thinking and feeling like I just didn't want to make the same record again. So maybe that's running a little bit. But also, I wanted to grow as a musician because. All I knew up until that point was just playing the acoustic guitar. I'd been playing these songs for, you know, from Suburban Nature. I'd been playing them, some of them, since I was in high school. So um, it was just a matter of growth for me. And, you know, kind of like I was saying earlier, I've listened to all different things. And actually most of what I listen to is a lot of electronic music. And so the way that I, you know, went about everything and the way that I digested everything was making a record that was different for me, vastly different. Um, so, you know, I, I knew what I was getting into, so I think it was just a split between n- not running in, with ill intent, but running with just for the sake of growth, you right. know? Right. Um, how difficult was it? I mean, to find whatever sound that was going to be? Um, it was fairly difficult. You know, there were a couple of minor meltdowns in the studio. <laughs> um, but that being said, uh, I, I definitely wouldn't have had it any other way. Yeah. I, I think I needed that that record and that time in the studio with you know my bandmates um, just to f- kind of figure out my footing and everything. And I, I still feel like every record I'm doing that. Um, but I think across the board, I don't I don't think you'll find any musician that wants to make the same record over and over again. And I have nothing against with I, st- I still write a lot on the acoustic guitar. I have nothing against folk music. You know I I dabble in everything like I said mm-hmm. so. You know, just I think for the, you know each time period, it's just like a, a snapshot of where I'm at currently, and I felt like this record, you know, I feel perfectly satisfied with how it captured a time period. Right, with the way "Don't Disconnect" sounds, I mean, it, it, it's an electronic record, but it's also mm-hmm. kind of a pop record. Yeah. Do you see yourself in comparison with top forty pop stars that are out there right now, even the big names like? Beyonce and things like that because I love to be compared to Beyonce. I love oh, right, <laughs> wouldn't we all? I know, uh, but I don't. Th- I, I really like. I don't see it as so different what you're doing at this point than maybe what they're doing. It's just sure. with a different outfit or absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I I will say touring is drastically different than I would imagine Beyonce's <laughs> tours go. But um, For you now. know, I think. You're still going to, no matter where you're at on the spectrum of being an artist or a musician or a writer, I think you still feel the same way about, you know, there's there's always the kind of feeling where you're never quite satisfied with where you're at. And that keeps you hungry and keeps you going. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't speak for Beyonce, but I would say we're exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you too, yeah. I, but I guess that there's also the other side because there are those uh, more avant-garde pop stars that are out there, um, fellow Texan Saint Vincent, uh, you love know, her. like yeah. like again, this record wouldn't be so uh, far from what even she's doing. And sure. it, it's that weird line about you know mm-hmm. what what makes the difference, what makes it more this side where it's weird or exactly. whatever, and what makes it this side where it's accessible Absolutely. to the masses. I mean, she's another perfect example. Um, of someone that I find her each record very different Mm -hmm. um, from where she started to now is kind of like you said, is that there's very much an avant-garde. You can see the, how New York has kind of inspired her musically in a lot of ways. And I love listening to each record. That's one of my favorite things is to, you know, take records of artists that I'm a big fan of and listen to them, not necessarily in one, one sitting, but listen to them in a chronological order of how they've become something that, that progression is really cool to, to hear. Yeah. And I would imagine a lot of the collaborations you've done have kind of aided in that uh, progression. Absolutely. I mean, uh, for those who don't know, um, you are heard on an Eminem record right, right at the beginning. Weird, right? Which has got to be something you probably didn't expect from the beginning. Can, can you give us the story on, uh, so you, you write sure. for um, hip-hop sometimes. I, I do. I, well, yeah. that's another thing is that I love hip-hop music. And um, a producer out of Dallas, a hip-hop producer uh, by the name of Symbolic One S1, uh, messaged me on Twitter like three years ago, which I was a fan of. I knew of him through a another Dallas band called the Cannabinoids, and um, he messaged me asking if I wanted to write some hip hop hip hop hooks for him. And I wrote him back immediately. And I think that day he sent me over like three tracks, and 
six months later, one of them uh, was the track for Bad Guy. And uh, I remember writing it and and recording it on GarageBand in uh, my friend's driveway. We were moving at the time, so I had to record it in my driveway because, you know, there was just a lot of noise, a lot of boxes being moved. And long story short, I sent it right over to him. I was recording it in my car, and he wrote back. He's like, oh, this is amazing. And then six months later, I found out that it was the first track on Eminem's record like three days before Eminem's record came out. That's got to help your career out, at least in some way. It has. Has it showed itself? To me, it was more a reflection on like just like how many other writers have a complete detached relationship with Mm -hmm. who they're writing for. Um, It kind of, I mean, the hip hop business is an entirely different business, I would say. It's kind of, S1 put it as the Wild West of the record business, which I think is totally true. Uh, But it was just crazy to me that we, S1 and I both found out days before the Eminem record came right. out that our track had made it onto the Eminem record. And then finding out that that record came, you know, won a Grammy you yeah. know, a couple of days ago was also like, whoa, that's crazy. We were a part of a Grammy-winning yeah. record. Um, it was just a crazy, crazy experience. But that being said, it opened a ton of doors. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting, though, you know, as a, as a songwriter yourself who creates and, and follows the song from creation all the way to the end. Right to being to working in a, a separate genre where it takes 10 people to write one song and how how does 14. that become personal 14 people 14, to write one song I think 14 song. people were on like cuz he did from what I understand so we had our track bad guy and then that track became two different songs but it's right. under one title right. so whereas like you know four or five different people worked on bad guy specifically became this <laughs> basketball team <laughs> of people on one song, um, which was crazy. Yeah. And again, that's something we didn't find out till the pretty much the day it came out. I so. guess in a purist sort of way, I'm really glad that it's you writing your songs and not 14 people writing a Sarah right. Jaffe song. It, ta- it, it takes an army, you know, to yeah. write it up. You have a second song in you? Um, since we haven't been here in a, in a little bit, we're going to play something from The Body Wins. It's called Mannequin Woman. Cannot find a pulse 